Now, one of the ways that I produce games very quickly when I have to, say as if when I was working at Gaia Online and we had an event coming up, and these were very tight deadlines because they were for, say, Christmas or Easter, and we couldn't change the dates of those holidays. So I had to produce games very quickly. So I've set up a template that I hope that will help you make some of your own games and make them faster. It just takes care of some of those annoying tasks. So I've got a face image here that I'm going to load in, load image, and I've got some snippets here. I've got snippets on phasergames.com if you want to copy and paste those to save time, or I just put them into sublime text here. And this load image key, and I'll replace key with face in both places, and quickly put a face on the screen, add image, and I'm going to say let face equals this add image zero zero face. So now we've just got something to play around with on the screen. And as you can see, the face is center aligned. The nose, or where the nose would be, is right up there at zero, zero. The first thing that I have in the template to save some time is an align class. And it's just some very simple functions, but I was using them over and over that it was just easier to make a class out of it. For example, center here. It takes the objects X and assigns it to the game config width divided by 2. And then it does the same for the height and the Y. But I was doing that so often it was just easier to put it into a function. Align center face. And another thing I was doing was scaling things so often. And I scale by percentage to make sure that it'll work on both desktop and mobile. And I'm taking the display width and setting it to a percentage of the game's width. And then to make it proportional, we assign whatever the scale X turns out to be. Because when we change the display width, we change scale X to a percentage. And if we assign that to scale Y as well, that will make it proportional. So align, scale to game width, face, and let's make it 10% of the game's width. Great. Now another thing I was having trouble with was laying things out. Because as you know, we don't know the whole size of the canvas until the game is loaded. So I was lining up everything by percentage. For example, face x equals game config width times 0.2, which would put it at 20% of the game's width. So right there. And that would be consistent across all devices then because we're doing it by a percentage. But this was taking up a lot of time. So I came up with an align grid. Let a grid equals new align grid. And we have to pass in a scene, which is this scene main. We pass in the number of rows. I like to use odd numbers, so we'll have a center row or column. So rows 11, columns 11. And for a guide, I put in a function called show numbers. So a grid show numbers. And then we have this nice grid here. And say that I wanted to put that face at number 35. So we'd say a grid, place it index, 35. And then the object we want to put there, face. And then that's consistent across all devices because we're doing it by percentage. Change it to the Pixel 2. I'll change it to the iPad. And percentage-wise, it's staying in the same place no matter where I put it. And the last class that I have in here is called the UI block. Now, this works the same as a phaser container, except there aren't any physics in it. And the reason that I did it this way was because there was some talk about not being able to put a container into a container. And I put containers in containers to be able to make UI elements. For example, making a text field and a button together, and then putting that in a scrolling list, that sort of thing. But there was some talk about not allowing the container to go inside the container. So I came up with this lightweight class. It's very well documented. It basically just keeps track of all the children of this group, and then it moves it accordingly. For example, let me put another face on here. Face 2 equals this add image face, and I'll scale them both here. Now I'll just place the faces a little bit apart by saying face 2x equals face x plus 100, 
and face 2y equals face y plus 100. And then I can make a group or a UI block by saying let block equals new UI block, block add face, and block add face 2. Block x equals, and then we set the block x, for example, at 300, and then one's off the screen there. So let me back that up to 200, and you see now they're moving together. Sort of like a group would be in phaser 2. So it works pretty much the same as a container, but it doesn't have the physics in it, making it more lightweight. And those are the three utility classes that I have in here. A line that lines things up and scales them, and a line grid that puts a grid based on percentages, and a UI block. And this is what I use for all my tutorials to save time and showing people how to build games and it's the basic template that I use almost every day. I hope this has been helpful. You can download that at phasergames.com. It's a free download. Thanks very much.